Hello and welcome everyone to another virtual Intrepid Adventure. Thank you so much for joining us today for our program, Flying in Style. My name is Alicia and I'm an educator at the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum here in New York City. And I'll be your host today for this program. But just as a reminder, the museum's live streams are free. But if you'd like to support us in delivering this content, please do click on the link in the comments or in the description. So this is a live program. Feel free to use the chat today. Say hello. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know maybe if you've ever been to the Intrepid Museum before. And of course, if you've got any questions, you can put them there as well. So today we are going to be talking about planes and more specifically the artwork on some of the planes that we've got on display at the Intrepid Museum. So things like what they represent and how designs on airplanes are kind of like sports teams, believe it or not. But first, a quick recap about our museum for those of you who may not be familiar. This is the Intrepid Museum. So our complex is located on the west side of Manhattan on the Hudson River. And our museum is actually housed inside of a historic World War II era aircraft carrier, the former USS Intrepid. So on site, we have a historic Cold War era submarine as well, and also a space shuttle, the Space Shuttle Enterprise, and also a British Airways Concorde. So lots of really cool, fun things to see. And also, as you can see in this picture here, it is really, really big. So our ship is 913 feet long. Now that is actually so big that if you took it and you stood it up on its end, it would be just about as tall there as New York City skyscrapers next to it. And it's also actually so long that you could just about play three whole games of football on top of the flight deck there at the same time. So it's a pretty fitting reference actually, because today we are going to be talking a little bit about teams. But to give you a little bit more uh, content here, a little more context, the Intrepid was built in 1943 for a very specific purpose. It was made during a time when we were fighting countries all the way across oceans. And at the time, we didn't really have the ability to launch our planes from over here in America and then fly them way across the uh, Atlantic there in order to get overseas. That would just take way too much fuel and time. So instead, we created things like the Intrepid. Now, tell me everyone out there in the chat, if you happen to know, what type of a ship is the Intrepid? Hmm, what is it called? What is something that would let us do that with airplanes out on the water? So something that carries aircraft, but also allows them to launch and land the planes as well. What might you call that? Hmm. So everyone, if you said an aircraft carrier, you'd be right. So not only can ships like this carry aircraft, but they also allow us to launch and land them just like a floating airport. So the Intrepid was in service during three wars, World War II, the Cold War, and the Vietnam War. And then after it was decommissioned, it was rescued from the scrapyard, believe it or not, and turned into the beautiful museum that we now all know and love in 1982. Now, everyone, if you were to visit a modern day aircraft carrier in service, Something like this would not be an unusual sight for you to see. Now, you'll notice that all of these crew members here are wearing a whole bunch of different colors, very bright colors, right? Well, if you have seen some of our other programs, you might recall that the color that they wear actually has to do with their job. So the red ones are the ordnance workers. They help out with the bombs and the ammunition, for instance. Then you've got uh, the people in purple there, or what they call the grapes, right? because they're wearing purple, just like grapes. So they help out with the fueling. They juice up the plane, so to speak. But seeing all these colors, and actually they call them Skittles, believe it or not, because they look like a pack of Skittles. Seeing all these colors, you know, it might remind you of something else where a bunch of people might wear specific colors and be on specific teams. So let me ask you out there, everyone, does anyone here like sports? And what are some of your favorite sports teams? Let us know in the chat. But I'll start us off. I happen to be from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania originally. So I have to admit my favorite sports team is the Pittsburgh Steelers, of course, and also the Penguins, the hockey team. Uh, but let's see what you all like out there as well. Um, you know, uh, people from here in uh, the New York City area, oftentimes some sports teams that we hear mentioned are things like perhaps the Mets or the Yankees. Uh, you've also got, you know, the Knicks uh, and uh, the uh, the in Brooklyn here, actually, where I live, too. Uh, we've got a, a big Brooklyn basketball team here as well that plays over at uh, the at the Barclays Center. Uh, 
But you know, everyone, when we think about some of these teams and sports, we can think about colors and logos. When I said some of those teams, maybe you thought of specific colors uh, of those teams or maybe specific logos of their brands, right? And different shapes and things like that. So those things can actually help us to identify their teams, even just at a glance. So again, here in New York, the Mets, right? The colors are blue, white, and orange, which are actually colors that are found on the New York City flag as well. So these are colors we can identify with here in the city. And we can also do that with planes as well. So if you think about your favorite sports team, all right, think about what makes your team's branding special? Maybe it's the colors or maybe it's the logo or the mascot, maybe. That's something that you might associate with it. That, believe it or not, is something that we also decorate our airplanes with. That, so they are very similar as well. So first of all, though, when we're looking at airplanes, we can, of course, look at things just like color right? The color that the airplane's painted. And there might actually be a very specific reason as to why it is painted the way that it is. So everyone take a look at this big blue plane here. Does anyone happen to know the name of this plane? Maybe you've tuned into one of our previous programs, or maybe you just want to take a stab at it. I'll give you a hint. There's a, there's a bunch of uh, superheroes that uh, have a team that's named this very very same thing here. We often get a lot of repeat visitors here. This is actually called the Avenger. All right. Now, this is the oldest plane that we have on site here at our museum. It is from World War II. But I like to point out this plane in particular because, again, if you've come to some of our other programs, you might know this is a camouflaged plane, believe it or not. Now you might wonder, how is this camouflage? That's a bizarre thing to be painted this way. Well, while at sea, the Navy wanted to protect its aviators and its ships, obviously. And one way they could do that was by hiding them in plain sight using camouflage. And that just basically means that there are different colors or patterns that can help them to blend in with their surroundings. Now you might think, yeah, that's pretty silly. This plane is flying through the air what is it going to blend in with, especially because it looks like it's got three different colors across it, right? Well, it actually depends how you're looking at it. If you happen to be flying below this plane, or maybe you're, let's say you're on a ship and you're looking up at it, if you are underneath it, you are going to see, if you look at this picture, white, right? You'll notice the underside, that belly of the airplane there is white. And that is because if you're looking up, it's going to help it to blend in with the clouds, now, if you happen to be flying right alongside it, you look over to, you know, the side there and you happen to see it, the first thing you are going to notice is that light blue color along the middle of it. And that helps it to blend in with the blue sky. Hopefully it's a nice day outside. Hopefully it is a blue sky. But then also, if you happen to be flying above it, looking down at it, what are you going to see right on the top of it there is that darker color, it's that dark blue color. And so when you're looking down, and of course, it's flying over the ocean out there as well, it is going to help it to blend in with the dark blue color of the ocean too. Now, many planes, um, other planes actually, other than the Avenger, so things like Hellcats and Corsairs, they also use that dark color also because they were Navy planes. Um, and again, they also blended nicely with that water. But, you know, there's actually some other Avengers, specifically ones that are flying uh, in uh, the North Atlantic that don't have blue shades. You can see here, for example, in the top. Um, instead, they were gray. Now, why were they gray? Well, the weather up there, up in the north, it's got a lot of gray clouds. It's not quite always a blue sky. So again, the gray helped it to blend in with that particular region, uh, the sky up there, in a much better way. And again, of course, on the bottom there, you can see that dark blue color. Now, everyone looking at these planes, there is something else that they all have in common. Take a close look. See what you can see that's in common about all three of these planes. And, uh, you know, there's actually a particular marking in particular that you might see on it. So if you can spot it, all right, it's a type of logo, we could say, on their sides, if you can happen to see what that is. And there you go. I just circled it for you in red. So it's right there. And does anyone happen to know what this is called on an airplane? Again, it's kind of like a logo. We can think of uh, the color of the plane, maybe like the jersey of the team. But the logo itself actually helps you to know what team you're looking at or in this case, what country that they are from. This marking here, everyone, is something called a roundel. 
roundel, okay? So this particular roundel represents the USA. But if you didn't necessarily get that at first glance, I don't blame you because it does kind of look like something might be missing from it right? So, you know, usually when you think of a country, you often might think of its flag, right? Uh, or, you know, the flag and specifically the colors of the flag, the colors of that country. So if this marking here is the United States, well, looks like something's missing here, right? When I think of the United States, I think of red, white, and blue, the colors on our flag. So of course, looking at this, this roundel here, I'd think, well, where's the red on it? Well, a little bit of a history lesson here for you, everyone. Believe it or not, it used to have a red uh, dot on it, right? Uh, so here is what it looked like. This is prior to the ones that we just saw. So looking at this picture, you can see here, it was a blue circle with a white star in it and then a red dot right in the middle. Now, you might wonder, well, why does it look different in those pictures then that we just looked at? And why do you think well, why do you think the Navy decided to remove this red dot from the roundel? Think about the time when they were flying it. This was during World War, what, right, leading up to World War II, all right? And, uh, well, who were we fighting at that time? And what did their flag look like? Remember, at that time, everyone, the Avengers and the Hellcats were flying in the Pacific Ocean against the Japanese Navy. And the planes that they were fighting against everyone looked like this. This is a Mitsubishi Zero. All right. These planes were flown by the Japanese. And if you notice the roundel on these planes, yeah, you might notice something similar. It is uh, a red circle surrounded by white there. So, yeah, that element was a little too similar, maybe a little too close for comfort for the one that we had. So again, going back to the sports team idea, you know, when you've got two teams that happen to have very similar or even the exact same color scheme, well, it's kind of confusing to think if they were playing each other, you can't just kind of glance at it and know which team was what really, because they might be wearing the exact same uniforms, right? And so that actually is uh, something that we had to fix, right? They usually had their home teams now wear white jerseys with their colors as accents. And then the away teams would wear colored jerseys with their colors, big and bold. So that was a way to make it a little more clear at a glance who is who, who's the home team and who is the visiting team. So with that in mind, America realized, yikes, we are fighting these planes that have a very similar feature. And if you are just scanning their horizon with your finger on the trigger looking just for, you know, red or a red dot, you might accidentally get a little excited and shoot down one of your planes, an American plane, because, again, we also had a red dot. So they decided none of that. We are going to change it. So they got rid of the red dot entirely, as you can see here, because they did not want to be mistaken for those Japanese planes, which is pretty smart. And eventually they did also add some red back into the roundel. But this is what it was looking like during that period. And you'll see also they added those two white bars on either side. So when they added in the red color, this is what it looked like. And actually, they took the form of the stripes, just like the stars and stripes on our flag, because later on, our planes were actually moving a lot faster. And it didn't really matter much as to what colors or symbols happened to be on them anymore. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So before we move on, everyone, I do want to play a little game with you. All right. We are going to play something that I call the roundel challenge. So I am going to show you some roundels. And I want you all out there to guess what country it comes from, all right? So use your observation skills. You are gonna see a roundel and you're gonna see two flags. So if you think it comes from the country that uh, has its flag on the left in the chat, I want you to type A. And if you think it comes from the countries whose flag is on the right, type B, all right? You'll get the hang of it once we get started. So here is the first one, all right? Now take a look here. Again, we're gonna be looking at things like the colors, the symbols, all right? And think about the significance of why a particular country might have chosen something like this roundel or the others that I'll show you here, and then take a guess. So which country do you think this roundel belongs to? All right, here are your options, everyone. We have Australia on the left there. So if you think it's from Australia, go ahead and type A. And if you think it's from New Zealand, the flag on the right there looks very similar though, doesn't it? Go ahead and type B. So looking at this roundel here, we see it is blue and white and red. So both of these flags happen to have blue, white, and red on them. But we also see a kangaroo image on it. Hmm. So we could think, okay, what country might be known for its kangaroos? Any guesses out there? 
All right, so get your final answers in in the chat. Type A or B for Australia or New Zealand. All right, and everyone, here we go. Three, two, one. The answer is Australia. So you'll notice that although we don't see that particular symbol on their flag, the colors are similar, though they were similar with New Zealand as well. But Australia is, of course, very well known for its kangaroos. And Shampa, good job. You said Australia. Excellent. All right. Now, just for fun, let's took, take a look. New Zealand's roundel here. Very similar. Again, very similar flag, too. Similar colors. But does anyone happen to know what the name of that bird is on their roundel? So in this case, now there's another animal that is very well known uh, in this particular country. This is called the, uh, the kiwi bird. So this is actually the national bird of New Zealand. And uh, New Zealanders nicknames are actually the kiwis. So there you go. They put a kiwi bird on their roundel. So let's do another one. All right. So here's the next one. Very colorful. We see yellow and red, and blue, and a white star in the middle. So taking a look at these, everyone, do you think that this roundel belongs to A, Zambia, we see their flag on the left, or B, Colombia, and we see their flag on the right? All right, what do we think? So again, we're looking at things like the colors, we're looking at the symbols, anything like that, any kind of structural things there with all of the different shapes. All right, so get your final answers in. Do you think this is A, Zambia, or B, Colombia? All right, last few guesses. Three, two, one. And there we go. The answer is Colombia. Now, yeah, this one might have been a little bit easy. Again, you can really, really see those color similarities, uh, the red and the blue and the yellow, all of those kind of just interesting line con uh, combinations there, all right? Pretty obvious, I think, with those colors. But for fun, let's look at the Zambian one. Again, that one really does reflect their flag as well. So both in the color scheme, as well as that beautiful bird with its arms outstretched there too. All right, so let's go to another one here. Take a look at this one. So looking at this, we see kind of a bullseye. It's green, it's yellow, and it's black. And so everyone, do you think that this is Ireland? On the left, we see Ireland's flag. Or on the right, we see Jamaica. All right. So again, looking at colors, all right, looking at shapes and things. Could probably take a guess there. We have some answers coming in the chat. Excellent. All right, everyone. So here we go. Last few seconds. Three, two, one. Jamaica. Again, also maybe a little bit easy to guess based on the colors. The green, the yellow, the black. But here's Ireland's for fun. This one actually, I think, is one of the coolest ones. It's got the same colors of the flag, but also that kind of swirly pattern. And it kind of evokes like a Celtic knot, I like to say. Uh, so, you know, it's something they're very famous for as well. I like how it's all swirled together like that. All right, here is another one. Interesting. Now, this one's shaped very differently. Uh, also, the colors, again. We're looking at these colors. It's kind of got this checkerboard pattern here. So do we think this one is A, Poland, or B, Canada? What do we think? Look at this. So again, the colors are very similar. All right. Also, the shapes don't necessarily reflect the flags here. So maybe we have to take a guess here. But what do we think? Is this Poland or is this Canada? We have a, a guess from the chat, Switzerland. Okay, so there's another one that flag perhaps might also be similar to that. But here's our, our two options, Poland or Canada. All right, last few uh, seconds to get your answers in here. Three, two, one. And there we go, it's Poland. Now the colors are very close here, again, with the red and the white. It's also got actually kind of this squared off kind of grid shape to it. Uh, so that is the Poland one. And also though, just for fun, here's Canada. And of course with this one, similar to what we were looking at before with Australia and New Zealand, that one has that very iconic maple leaf right in the center, just like their flag. Great. All right. So here is another one. This one is actually the last one. This one's going to be a little bit tricky for you. So take a look at this one. Again, we have another kind of bullseye shape. All right. So looking at this one, everyone, do we think that this is A, Kenya, 
or B, Jordan? Tricky. Now, these colors are very, very similar. Same colors. All right. Red, black, white, and green. Similar pattern with those stripes as well. So, everyone, do you think that this is A, Kenya, or B, Jordan? Hmm. It's a close one. Their flags look very similar. Hmm. All right. So, get those final answers in, everyone. A or B. All right. I see a couple coming in. Great. And everyone, the answer is Kenya. All right. So you can really tell, I think, the difference because it's got those thicker stripes with the thinner white lines in between. So that really does reflect their flag a bit more. Uh, and uh, also here, actually, let's take a look at Jordans. With Jordans, you can actually really tell that also is iconic of their flag, too, because it's got that seven-pointed star in the red triangle and uh, also the thicker lines, just like their flag as well. Great. So, everyone, we can see that these roundels have very distinctive characteristics that help us to learn uh, where they are from. So I want to go ahead and pause now and see if we've got any questions before we move on. Any questions about any of these um, flags and things? Are all roundel circles? No, they're not. Um, but they, you know, they can actually be a variety of shapes. We saw Poland, for instance, is square shaped. Uh, and there's also even some kind of um, in the shape of, I mean, all sorts of shapes. But there's one that's kind of in the shape of a shield, um, also a triangle or a cross, depending on what country it is. Most of them are circles, um, which makes sense. The name roundel, like round. Um, but there's a variety of others as well. So all different kinds of shapes. All right. Any other questions? Do roundels always stay the same? No, they can definitely change over time. Uh, just like how we mentioned the American roundel changed. Uh, it started off with the star and the dot, and then they realized that wasn't a really good idea. So they decided to change it with um, taking out the dot, right? And then they later added the red stripes in again. So really, you can change it however you want, just as long as everyone knows, <laughs> as long as everyone's on the same page and they know that it's changed. Um, that's really all that matters. But yeah, they can definitely change. Great. All right, so we have learned, everyone, that roundels act like logos, and they can help us to identify countries. But if we look at another plane that we happen to have on the hangar deck here at the Intrepid, you will notice on this particular one, all right, this is the Fury. Um, you can notice that it's, it's a jet plane, right, from the Cold War era. So it came after the Avenger. But it takes a little bit of a different approach here. It's not painted blue in that counter shade camouflage. In fact, it is primarily gray. But you'll notice here that it's also got this very bold yellow lightning bolt painted across the side of it, right? So it is kind of cool. Uh, and that's actually done on purpose. But before I get to that, I want to again point out something else on it. You can very clearly more see here on the back side of the plane. So I want to point out again that roundel. So this is what the United States roundel looks like today, similar to before. That white star on a blue circle and those two white stripes on the sides, but now it's got the red on it, all right? Just not the red dot. Um, it's got those red stripes on it, which actually does, again, look more like our American flag. Now, again, this was during the Cold War. This was after World War II. So again, our, our people were flying it and fighting against were a little bit different. But I also want to point something else out about it. Um, sometimes, you know, you might not want to show that the plane belongs to a certain country um, quite as prominently. Sometimes you might want to be a little sneakier. Again, this was flying during the Cold War. This was a, a war that we were fighting that we were kind of spying on other people. So if you want to blend in and not be super obvious while flying around, even though, you know, they are very fast, um, they're going to use something called low visibility versions of the roundels here. So if you take a look at these, everyone, you can see that they have the same shape, the same kind of outline and pattern, but now they are all in this gray or just black color, this outline. So the United States one, we just saw it as blue, white, and red. But here it's just the outline of it, just the gray. So the shape and being able to identify those shapes is also very important. But going back again to that lightning bolt, that gray color, as the Navy used jets more and more, they limited the use of paint on jets because all of that paint for all that camouflage, it actually added weight. And it didn't really seem like it would be that much perhaps, but if you're painting something really big, it really adds up. And in some cases it could add, you know, 50 to 100 pounds to it. So instead they decided to take some of that extra paint off 
and just add more fuel, which was helpful. But why the lightning bolt, right? So pilots were able to add some designs to their own planes to give them more flair, you know, make them a little more unique. And if you think about athletes who, you know, maybe they've got special hair. I'm thinking of Troy Polamalu, of course, of the Steelers. Or if they have, you know, long sleeves or special socks or goggles or something like that that they wear. So those things are what make them individuals on the field or on the court. And actually the same thing here. And also in this particular one, all right, so this is the Skyhawk. Do you see that green symbol that is uh, right across the back of it there? So that green thing there, it represents the squadron that it was part of, which is basically a smaller team that flies together within the team of everyone who comes from the same ship. So these green things here kind of looks like maybe a lizard, right? Or an iguana, perhaps. So as you could probably guess, the name of this squadron was the Green Lizards. And here is their patch, all right? This is the logo that they got to wear on their clothes. It's pretty cool looking, I think. This is what their attack squadron logo looked like. Now, some people say it kind of looks like an alligator or, uh, you know, Godzilla, maybe, you know, holding a trident. Um, there's a sunset over the water. Uh, but you might have noticed the one on the plane doesn't really look quite as cool, maybe. It doesn't really look quite as detailed as that one, right? Uh, and that's actually just because, well, the artist, you know, this artist has to go around and paint on all of the planes, and it's well, it's a little complicated to have to paint that elaborate mural there, you know, on a bunch of planes. They wanted something simple and easy to replicate and easy to identify. And also, if you're from far away, you might not see all of the details. You might not see, you know, the uh, the scales on this creature or those little teeth. You just need something that you can see from afar very easy. So that green shape, easy to replicate, very, very cool. Uh, maybe a little less intimidating, but still very cool. So the Skyhawk is actually pretty special to our museum because this is the, this is the only plane um, that actually, well, actually now we have another one. So it's one of the few planes that took off and landed from the Intrepid. And all of the others that we've seen uh, so far here are types of planes that took off and landed, but this exact plane really did. So this is actually a very special one to us in particular. Now, there is a funny story, though, about this plane. Uh, they say that there were two different squadrons. They were going out on liberty for a time, which basically meant that they had some free time. And they were going to go out and land on an air, air base. And the squadron um, had about 14 planes each. So one squadron leaves their planes, they go away. And the other squadron, one night, they went over to the other planes and they stole one of the planes from them and painted over it with their own squadron's marking. So finally, when it came time for them both to leave, they left all their planes, uh, but the other squadron, or they left with all their planes, rather, but the other squadron realized, uh, well, this doesn't make sense. It looks like they left one of theirs behind. We're missing one of ours. Where did it go? They were looking around, looking for, again, that identifiable logo. And they couldn't find it until they realized it was there. It had just been painted over. So that was kind of a nasty trick that they played on one another. Not very nice, but still kind of funny story that we like to tell. All right. So I want to pause here one more time, see if we've got any more questions about any of these things before we move on. Any questions? Did the pilots paint the planes themselves? Yeah, so actually pilots would frequently paint their own art on the planes. We um, talked about, of course, the squadron art. They painted over other squadron art, um, but also things like nose art. Uh, in general, they would often paint on there, you know, just for fun to show a bit of personality, a little bit of flair, like we might wear, you know, pins or something on ourselves. Um, we'll also actually see another fun one in just a bit on another plane um, that is on the nose. I'll save that for a little later. Uh, but they painted all sorts of interesting interesting art. They painted animals. Uh, they painted, you know, ladies and words, all kinds of things on the sides of their airplanes uh, during wartime to, you know, just keep them entertained and to make them their own, to personalize their planes. Great question. Others? What are some of the other squadron pictures? Oh, yeah, there's a ton. So uh, you've got, you know, animals and weapons and shields uh, that, that kind of look like, you know, like you'd imagine a family crest almost. Um, so symbols that you know, that means something to you. Uh, you've got devils and Vikings and dragons. Um, but then you've also got things like chess pieces, uh, cartoon characters. I mean, you name it. 
they just got creative. Um, there's actually a card game called Squadron Insignia from during World War II um, that was a, it was a matching game. So you had a matching insignia of the different squadrons on cards and then uh, some information about each of them and then one card out of all of it that was the enemy. So you were supposed to find the pairs of the matching insignia for points and then whoever is left with the enemy card at the end um, had to also deduct a ton of extra points. So I guess kind of like Old Maid meets... I don't know, like some matching card game, but um, it's kind of interesting. And I can actually see how people might be really into that around the time of World War II as well. And like learning about all of these different symbols and the history of them, because they actually lasted for quite some time throughout, you know, the history of uh, the Navy and the military. All right. So moving on here, everyone, this plane is actually a rather famous type of plane. This is a Blue Angels Tiger. Uh, this particular one was flown in the 50s and 60s. And they are uh, part of a very special squadron of acrobatic pilots. So they do shows all around the country to show off all of the skills and techniques that the Navy pilots were trained to do. The Blue Angels, you might have heard of them. Now, they are actually really well known for flying in formation doing lots of incredible flying feats and uh, really representing just the top skills of Navy pilots. So here they are flying in formation. Uh, and, you know, on one side of this particular plane here, here we go, you can see uh, the roundel, kind of, right? It's a roundel. Uh, it's their logo or their symbol right next to where it says Blue Angels. But if we take a closer look at it, you can actually see in that insignia there, I'll make it a little bigger for you, you can see that it has on it, um, it says Naval Air Training Command. And in the clouds up in the top right, there are four Blue Angels planes flying in that formation that I just showed you. And then you also might see on the bottom left, it's actually got an aircraft carrier on it. So there you go. See, it's a naval, uh, naval specific squadron. Um, and another thing to note here are the colors. All right. So you've got that blue and gold color. Now those are the official colors of the United States Navy, but these are actually specific shades for the blue angels themselves. So their colors are actually called blue angels, blue, and the yellow is called insignia yellow. So specific colors just for their brand. Now, another insignia that's really neat to look at is on this plane, the Grumman Cougar. So this plane was from the 1950s. And if we take a look at that one a little bit closer. All right. So we can see there. Very cool. This one is like a pirate, right? This is the Jolly Roger sign. And it's a pretty common one. So this was reused a lot over time. There are actually a number of different squadrons that have used this particular squadron logo. But there is a rule about it. Only one Navy squadron at a time can use it. So if you are part of the Jolly Roger squadron, that is your logo. But if your squadron is decommissioned, then it's up for grabs and another group can come in and actually use it. But yes, definitely a very cool one. Definitely kind of an older one. Um, but this is the Cougar and definitely you can see that Jolly Roger insignia on the side of it right next to the American Roundel. Now across from the Cougar, we've got this one. This is called the Kefir. This one has a roundel on it as well that you might notice there. So let's take a closer look. Now looking at this roundel here, might surprise you a little bit. Looks a little different than the American ones that we were just looking at. So what country do you think this roundel might represent? Does anyone recognize that symbol by any chance? All right, so we have a white circle with a dark blue uh, six-pointed star on it. Anyone happen to take a guess of what country this could be? All right, the answer is actually Israel. So there's the flag of Israel. You can see there is a six-pointed star on there. And fun fact, kafir, which is the name of the plane, K-F-I-R, it literally translates into lion cub. Now, this plane happens to be a very powerful supersonic jet. Uh, and it also is, you will see here, camouflaged, right, to blend in with somewhere, blending in specifically with the desert, the desert landscape that it actually uh, would fly over out there. Now, remember, we were also talking about teams within teams. So we've also got this one here. So this is kind of another type of team now that we're going to be looking at. This is the U.S. Coast Guard. That's the symbol for it there. 
And it has on it, it's got anchors crossed there and 1790 written on the center part there. That is when it was founded. Um, so that's the symbol of the U.S. Coast Guard, all right? And this uh, helicopter in particular was flown from the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And as you can see here, it says, well, you can kind of see it says Brooklyn underneath the, or the wing there, or the, the helicopter arm is, is kind of covering there. Um, this one is from the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And these types of helicopters were used actually specifically to save people from the water. So again, you can see the U.S. roundel right to the left of where that Coast Guard symbol is. Um, also, another neat thing about this helicopter, you might notice there's some little buoy things over where the landing gear are, and that helps it to float, just kind of like a like a life raft kind of thing. But they also would hover above the water and send down a basket to allow people as well. Now, this one's really interesting. This is called the Air Maki, and it's got some colors on it too, but take a look at that roundel. All right, so the roundel matches the colors. It's got the same colors there. So let me ask you here another question. What country do you think that this one comes from? The colors that we're looking at here are red, white, and green. There are a couple of countries that have those colors on their flag. Any guesses what country this one might be coming from? What country does that kind of look like? And uh, on the plane, the stripes on the plane might actually give you a hint. Looks very much like their that country's flags, the red, white, and green. Or the green, white, and red, I guess. <laughs> so the answer to this one, this is the roundel for Italy. All right. So these colors represent Italy. And actually, that plane that we just looked at, the Air Maki, is an Italian version of the Blue Angels. They call them Frecce Tricolori. My terrible Italian accent. Tricolored arrows. That's what that means. And they do stunts just like the Blue Angels do. They even, um, you know, put those colors up in the air and smoke. And they train pilots on the Air Maki, like the one that we've got. So the stripes on the sides uh, represent those three colored arrows. And also, you know, those things that they streak through the sky there in the Italian colors. Also, right across the way on our flight deck, we've got another very cool insignia on our Harrier jet that you can see here. So the Harrier jet is a really cool plane. It actually has vents on the side that get angled down, which lets the plane go up. We can't talk about this in another program. And actually, when we look at it very closely, we can see that the insignia on this one is a playing card and specifically the Ace of Spades. So this one is the actually one of the oldest known uh, squadrons. They go back all the way to World War I. But of course, many have used it over the years. So this one got nabbed up specifically by Squadron VMA-231. Uh, but yes, definitely a very cool plane here, the Harrier Jet. Uh, it is what we call a VTOL aircraft, vertical takeoff and landing. It can actually adjust its jets in order to do so. And then, of course, we were talking about uh, artwork, so I have to show you this one with this fabulous nose art. This is the Crusader. All right, this one on the front, as you can see, has a shark face on the front, a nice shark face. Um, and this was painted like this by the pilot. Again, he did this both to kind of differentiate planes, but also just kind of make the plane look really cool and kind of fierce, you know, imagine flying alongside this plane and looking over and seeing nothing but a giant mouth and seeing these shark pointy shark teeth. <laughs> that might startle me just a little bit, but I'm also afraid of sharks. So <laughs> there's that. So that's the Crusader. Again, just a nice, cool, you know, way to just kind of personalize a plane, make it look a little more fierce. But actually, if we look at this one, this is the Sky Raider. You can see it's painted silver. This one actually was done this way because when we got it and we restored it pretty fairly recently, actually, we wanted to make it look original, of course. But in order to make it look the most original, it actually would have just been plain aluminum on the outside, just plain silver with no paint on it. So just silver metallic, right? Now, you know, that might look really cool, but that would actually be really hard on the plane itself because it rains here in New York. It snows here in New York. It's windy. So the aluminum would actually start to corrode and get rusty. You know, you know, least of all the fact that we are literally, you know, docked at port here on salt water and brackish water. So that would also be really bad for it too. Um, but that wouldn't be really great if it started to corrode and get rusty. That'd be a lot of work on our, uh, you know, restorators and, and just not fun for people to see. 
So the museum decided to paint it gray to make it look aluminum, but also to protect the metal underneath it as well. So in this case, it was painted more as a preservation tactic, which is also perfectly valid. Um, but there is also a really neat insignia to look at it on here as well. And when we can take a closer look at it, you know, soak this one up a little bit. What do you see here? There's a lot of different elements to this particular one. Um, what do you think this plane represents? What do you think this one did based on looking at this insignia? So looking closely, we can see there's some birds on it, right? It looks like there's some baby birds in a nice safe nest on top of the world. And then also it looks like maybe there's an older bird that's flying around the world with a helmet on. And on the bottom, it says testing division. So this represents the fact that this was a prototype. This was a test plane of an attack bomber. And so there's lots of little clues that you can sometimes, you know, find in some of these pictures here. Uh, with this case, it was a testing plane. You can tell it because it's got like that crash test dummy helmet on. So there you go. Pushing it out of its nest, giving it a shot, seeing how it does. So everyone, uh, I want to pause here once more before we wrap up and see if we've got any other questions about uh, any of these planes or anything like that. How close can the Blue Angels fly to each other? Those pilots are super skilled. Let me tell you, the Blue Angels are known for their extremely tight formations. Um, I believe the closest that they get while they're in air, it's just over, I think it's about a foot and a half. Uh, so about 18 inches apart, which is which is literally like this big, um, while they're uh, in that maneuver actually that I showed you. It's called the Diamond 360 Maneuver. So it's those four planes, just like on their insignia. That's what they're famous for. Uh, but yeah, these pilots are extremely talented, extremely good. They fly in these very tight formations, really high and also really low too. So I think that their lowest maneuver, that's something called the Sneak Pass, uh, it's something like 50 feet from the ground. Um, and it also, uh, they're, they're going like 700 miles an hour at the same time, which is nuts. So 700 miles an hour at 50 feet from the ground, these pilots are just amazing. So yay for the Blue Angels. If you ever get a chance to see them, do it. They're great. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Why are some of the cockpits blue? Yes. So the uh, aircraft restorators have to make decisions, like I said, about some of the artwork on the planes um, that we have at the museum. They often try to paint them or just the plane in general, um, how they originally looked. But sometimes they also make the choice to leave it um, to show some age as well. I know that they were just um, restoring a helicopter and they decided to actually just leave kind of the, the corrosion and the patina on the inside as well. They just wanted to preserve that. But the blue on top of the Crusader in particular, actually, let me go back to that one. Here it is. Yeah, so if you notice the cockpit of this particular plane is this bright blue color. That is not the glass that you are looking at. The glass is not blue. Um, this is another one of those decisions to protect it, actually. So it's not artwork done by the pilot. The pilot would not be able to see outside of this plane, actually. Um, this is special paint that is used to protect the inside of the cockpit of the plane to protect it from the sun. Because again, it's outside, it's exposed to the elements all day. So it's exposed to the rain, the sleet, the snow, the hail, the whatever, you know, the hurricanes that are coming through, but also the sun, right? The sun is very, very harsh out there on that flight deck all day long, um, especially out in the summertime when it's just, you know, really coming down. Uh, so those are really important elements to think of to protect the inside of it. Um, the pilots, of course, would not have had that on the glass, but we've got it because we want to preserve the planes to protect them. Great question. So everyone, uh, if you do have any other questions, you know, I invite you to reach out to us through our social media um, or go to the website intrepidmuseum.org to touch base with us. Uh, and I want to thank you all so much for watching and playing along with the Roundel Challenge and everything with me today. Uh, as you know, the museum has introduced a number of live streams just like this one. So please do follow, like, and subscribe to this channel uh, or visit our website for the latest streaming schedule. And also as a reminder, we are re oh, reopened to the public public seven days a week, again, from 10 to 5. So we'd love to see you on site at our museum as well, if you happen to be in the area. And you can actually check out some of these really cool planes that we just looked at in person. Now, our next family program is going to be next week on Thursday at 11 a.m. So that is 
Thursday, November 11th, which you might also recognize as Veterans Day. So it is going to be a new program called Tales from the Flight Deck. And in honor of Veterans Day, we are going to get up close and personal with a few aircraft on display at the Intrepid Museum. And here's some amazing stories about some of the very brave men and women who flew them. So once again, that is going to be next week on Thursday at a new time in particular for just next week, 11 a.m. So easy to remember the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, also very timely in terms of Veterans Day, right here on our streaming platforms. So Thursday, November 11th at 11 a.m. for Tales from the Flight Deck. Then everyone, reminder that later in the day at our usual streaming time at 3 p.m., we invite you to join us on all of our streaming platforms for a very special commemorative ceremony streaming live from our very own hangar deck in honor of Veterans Day. So we've got a number of plan things planned for you next week on Thursday. So 11 o'clock for our program and 3 o'clock for our Live from the Intrepid ceremony honoring our veterans. So once again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. And hopefully we will see you online for another Intrepid adventure. See you next time.